Good morning in Boker Tov, and welcome back to our 10 Minutes of Meaning, our weekly study of Mesila Sesharim, the Ramchal tries to help inspire us to live our best selves and our best lives, to achieve our greatest potential and to make our greatest contribution to this world. I want to thank our dear friends, Chani Eleni Grunstein, who sponsored this series in memory of Chani's father, Mr. Aaron Tambor, Aaron Ben Yitzchak, his neshama should have an aliyah. We are still in the 11th chapter of Mesil Sesharim, and the Ramchal has been taking us through the Midah of Nikias the midah of cleanliness, how to purge from ourselves those temptations, those desires, those distractions, all of that noise, so that we live our lives not having to struggle and not with a sense of tension or friction, but rather we intuit and we instinctively know to do the right things and to behave the right way and to make the right impression and to live the correct and the right lives. We began with zahirus, mindfulness, cautiousness, being present with every thought, speech, and deed. We moved to zerizus, alacrity. Once we learn how to regulate and be disciplined over our behavior, then how can we pursue our goals with, uh, with uh, zealousness? How do we pursue those goals with enthusiasm and energy? And then we've moved over here to Nikias, where we've been talking about so many different components of our lives, from how we eat and how we speak, and honesty and integrity in business, interpersonal relationships. Another Amchal has moved over to the world of Midos, to the world of character traits, of behavior, that lest one dismiss those as insignificant, or is not important to focus on, or is not worthy of our attention or our personal effort, this is the very definition of a person. Just like when it comes to our actions, to learn to disciplined eating, discipline when it comes to punctuality and time, discipline when it comes to speech, discipline when it comes to every area and arena of life, so too discipline learning to regulate our character. And in fact, if I were to ask you, what's harder, to change a quality, a character trait, or to learn to control a behavior? Which one is more difficult? Which one is harder? The Ramchal says changing a character trait is harder. There are people who naturally react with envy, with jealousy. There are people who get angry. They fly up the handle very easily. There are people who struggle with arrogance and ego. These are core character traits and breaking one of them, changing one of them, transforming who we are and how we think and behave and interact with the world. It's even harder than learning to regulate one of our, one of our behaviors. Because a person's nature informs their character even more than it does their behavior. Due to the makeup of a person's temperament and personality, can either be a great assistance or it can be great opposition. Wow, what a battle. It's our parasha. The fight against our alter ego, the fight to not eat that thing, to not say that thing, the fight to not feel that way, to not react in that manner. It is a battle, it is a fight. Make no mistake, whatever battles we have to do externally with the world around us, often, not always, they pale in comparison to the struggle and the battle with our own internal voice, with our own alter ego, with the own side of us that wants to sabotage our success, our happiness, our best effort, our biggest impact on the world. It is a daily grind. The alarm went off. Are you going to hit four snoozes? Are you going to jump out of bed? Are you going to be early on time or late to shul? Are you going to be able to focus and concentrate on davening? When a spouse or children or friends or a coworker do something that aggravates and frustrates, are you going to react in anger? Are you going to let yourself lose your cool? Or are you going to stay calm, cool, and collect? When you see someone who has something that you want, will you be jealous and envious? Or do you have the capacity to be happy for them? Breaking those qualities, engaging in that battle, it is nothing short of a war. It's going against our nature. It's going against the momentum that carries us. And this is what our rabbi said, who is a mighty person? Who is a warrior? It's not the one who can lift the most weights. It's not the person who can hit the ball the farthest. It's not the person who wins the most wars, the sharpest shooter. The gibor, the warrior, is the one who can defeat that internal voice, not external enemies, who can regulate their lives, who can be disciplined, who can transform, who can break a habit. It's really, really extraordinary. The Vilna Gon in his commentary on Mishlei Perik Dalad Pasuk Yud Gimel, it's worth looking it up. The Vilna Gon Mishlei Perik Dalad Pasuk Yud Gimel, the Gon, the Grah makes a famous statement. He says, I'll tell it to you in the English. 
He says, a person lives in order to break the Midah, which he hasn't broken yet until now. Thus, a person must always strengthen himself to work because, listen to the words of the Vilna Gaon, if he doesn't, what is the point of living? If he doesn't, what is the point of living? If we don't control our Midas, if we don't conquer our alter ego, if we don't regulate our instinct and our reaction, if we don't live our best selves, what is the point of living? What is the point? So yes, externally, I got to hear the shofar and I got to shake the lulav and I got to put on the tefillin. I have to do the mitzvos. Yes, I have to say mincha on time and I'm only allowed to eat this. Externally, there's 613 things, but they're all there to cultivate an inner sense of discipline, the capacity to regulate, to mold and shape who we are. We learn and observe Torah in order to become b'nei Torah and b'nos Torah. It's not supposed to be something external to ourselves, a habit or a hobby. It's supposed to shape and mold who we are. So says the Gon, identify a midah that you have to break that you haven't broken yet and break it. Because if you don't and you can't, then what is the purpose of living? It is why we are here. Rav Hutner in Pachad Yitzchak and Yom Kippur, Rav Hutner says that the truth of the matter is the power of change is the greatest innovation after the wonder of the creation of heaven and earth. Wow, you hear that? When you're contemplating what are the great wonders of the universe, the greatest wonder of history is that Hashem created ex nihilo, something from nothing. He didn't have ingredients or materials to start with. He couldn't go to Home Depot or Lowe's. He created a world from nothing. He created a world from nothing. We commemorate and we celebrate that every week. It's called Shabbos, Zechel Mas, and Bereshis. That is the greatest act. Says her foot, you know what the second biggest act is? When a person can conquer Amida. A person can conquer Amida. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I was recently talking to a couple and trying to help them navigate some challenging times. And the husband mentioned that his wife used to react very impulsively and react very strongly and intensely. But when it was pointed out to her in the past, she has dedicated herself to really working on it and she no longer does that. And I was in awe. I was in awe to be able to become aware and alert about a certain quality that needs to change and to set oneself out and to determine to change it and to succeed. It's amazing, amazing. I also recently learned about a young man who when he was younger in his teenage years was mean, was obnoxious, was cruel to peers, but decided to conquer that. And is one of the nicest people I know now. There, we have that ability. We have that ability. And says Rav Hutner, it is nothing short of almost imitating creation of heaven and earth. Because change, the ability to transform ourselves, to regulate ourselves, to be disciplined over ourselves, is an act of self-creation. So almost as great as the creation of the world. And that's what the Ramchal is encouraging us here. It's not enough to regulate our external actions and behaviors. We have to become aware of and dedicated to molding and shaping who we are internally, impacting who we are on the inside, becoming better people. There are many qualities. All the man's worldly actions, there's a number of character traits. So whatever we do externally, there's a corresponding internal program or drive that leads to that action. Just like when it comes to external action and behavior like mitzvahs, we have to cleanse ourselves. We have to remove any, any uh, contamination, any delay, any procrastination, and just do the mitzvah properly. And we have to identify what will bring us down, what will knock us off. So he says, now we're going to analyze and we're going to dive into what are the qualities that are most prevalent, that are most pernicious. Gaiva, kas, kina, and taiva. Gaiva, kas, kina, and taiva. Those are the four. Arrogance, anger, jealousy, and lust. These are the four that almost everybody struggles with. Arrogance. If not arrogance, ego. Ego gets in the mix. How many times do we get involved in conflict? And at the core of that conflict was an unhealthy presence of our ego. Ego. Gaiva. Kas. Anger. Anger. To fly off the handle, to overreact, to lose our cool. Anger clouds judgment. Anger lights up the animal parts of the brain and quiets the human parts of the brain. Animal disturbs our good judgment. Kina, jealousy, envy, being angry about what others have. And taiva, lust, wanting what we want, when we want it, and how we want it. 
you know, there's uh, three midos, the Mishnah and Pirkei Avos tells us, they remove a person from the world, kina taiva and kavod. Kina taiva and kavod are begematria sheker. Begematria sheker. If you pursue kina taiva and kavod, uh, envy, honor, and lust, then you're living in a world of falsehood. You've turned the world upside down. To achieve MS, to live a world of truth and to live a truthful life, you have to transcend those qualities, break them. In kol ila midos ro'os ha-sharos ha-mi keres mufarsemes, ain't sarach l'arayos. We don't have to spend a long time, says the Ramchal, trying to prove or bring evidence for why these qualities are detrimental. Kinei ro'os heinam be'atzma ve'ro'os betol doseim. Their core, they're bad. Their corollaries are bad. Kikulam chutz mishurus ha-seicha v'achachma. Because they all operate outside of rational thinking. They quiet, they silence, they turn off our ability to think clearly, they cloud our judgment, and they cause us to sabotage our own lives. And each one brings us to terrible mistakes. Arrogance and ego, when, our, when we become inflated, then we forget Hashem. On anger, it says, A person gets angry, it's as if they're worshipping an idol. Really, we're giving in to our own sense of uh, who we want, what we want, we're worshipping ourselves. It says, so we'll end here, but what the Ramchal says is, I don't have to prove to you how negative they are, how detrimental they are, the impact they leave, but we'll go through one by one, beginning next time, says the Ramchal, analyzing and investigating how can we break them, how can we eliminate them, how can we overcome them, how can we purge them, how can we become nucky, clean from the presence of those qualities in our lives. Until then, stay happy, stay healthy, stay holy. If 15 minutes, 8.45, living with Amuna, 9 o'clock tonight, we go behind the Bima with Petey Deutsch, fighting for her right to compete in the Olympics, and move them to a Sunday. Join us both uh, and for all of our learning opportunities. Have a fantastic day.